Hello everyone, I'm L.A. Little and this is the weekly NEO TA Wrap, where we take a look at these markets on a weekly basis, asking ourselves what happened last week, and what does it tell us about the coming ones. We do this show every Sunday night, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube, available to you there. It's under the channel L.A. Little. Subscribe to it anytime content is pushed. You'll be notified and you can check it out. As far as what happened to these markets last week, we had a nice week up, another nice big push. NASDAQ was the leader. S&P's not far behind. Russell, Dow Jones trailing. Up on the year finally. It's the first time in, uh, you know, 2015. Six weeks in now, we finally see, uh, you know, a little bit of a spread to the upside on these indexes. If we take a look at the index itself, uh, we'll start with the S&P 500, where we usually start, and uh, it's over the tops. And we were looking at it last re week. If you remember, we were talking about that uh, we needed to see it push over these swing point highs. We had talked about the ideal of some sort of a retrace that did not come all the way back down, but come somewhere down in between. Well, it was a slight one. Now has an ABCD structure to the upside just took out this swing point high, took out multiple ones here. On this break has taken out multiple ones as well. Well, actually that's not true on the S&P, it's true on the composite and NDX. Uh, S&P didn't register six bars before it took it out on the weekly. If we take a look at that weekly, you can see what I'm talking about there. You never quite registered a swing point high there uh, because it because it got higher the next week and now you're within six bars, you're back up and over. But nevertheless, it doesn't change things. And if you remember, folks, the big story had been all along these retest regions, not only here on the indexes, but on the sectors. They came down, they tested, they tested, they tested, they never could break. What does that do? Well, eventually it's going to try to test, test on the other side and try to break. And now you do have the break on the futures, and not on the futures, but on the S&Ps, and it's over the highs. It's, it's you know, four days, pretty good push now after that Monday pullback, but uh, it looks to me like it can push some more, and if you look at those targets on that ABCD structure, uh, that presses up another 40 points or so, so we could get a fairly decent move, and a lot of that's going to have to be uh, or is going to be dependent on what comes out of Greece this week. Uh, U.S. markets are, cha are, are closed tomorrow. Uh, President's Day, it's uh, 216, so President's Day, they're going to be closed. Open back up on Tuesday. By then, whatever news is going to be coming out of Europe has already probably came out. That could lead to a spike higher, or we may see some sort of a pullback off of that. If we get a pullback, you know, the first thing you want to do is watch this retest regen, and so it becomes very important that this thing actually does extend higher before it comes back to have a better chance of holding, and not only that, to set up another nested ABCD structure inside that, uh, if in fact that's the way it works out. So ideally you want to see this S&P push up a little bit more and set up a larger push to the top side. Can it do it? Well, if we look elsewhere and we look at the NASDAQ composite, the NASDAQ composite is going for the 2000 highs now. They're only a couple hundred points up, breaks over two swing points. This is on the daily chart. Breaks over them right here, as the volume confirmed, pushing north and north in a nice way, right? Two big bars. If this one comes back, the retest regen is here, so it can come back more than likely will hold. It has ABCD structures in place already, although these are nearing completion at this point. So I would expect it will start to pull back here pretty soon uh, and then potentially set up another ABCD structure to take it higher. If we look at the NDX, now the NDX not as strong, but it makes the push finally gets over swing point highs. And I didn't show it on the, uh, the NASDAQ composite, but we'll look at it here on the NDX. Also breaks over swing point highs here, has a confirmed trend. 
And if you do ABCD structures here, uh, they get pretty ridiculous in terms of how high they project. So we may be in store for another big leg to the upside, uh, especially if Greece solves their problem and uh, you know the tragedy is over there with the Greek story and we move higher off of that news. Again, you know the same sort of idea that we just talked about in the S&P was the same sort of idea here. You test, test, can't break. You finally break it uh, to the top side. Looking at the last one here, the Russell, uh, in terms of the indexes, the Russell now, uh, let's look at it on the weekly. The Russell has been in a range trade since last year. It's, it's a range trade now this long, just starting to peak out over the top. That one also, ABCD structure. Uh, we're on the weekly here, so you have an ABCD structure here that doesn't project very much farther, a little bit farther. If you take the larger one, right, that one actually has a much larger structure in place. So it looks to me like all these indexes uh, potentially move up, come back in, do some sort of a retrace, set up another ABCD structure to go meet those higher projections uh, on a longer term basis. That's kind of the way they're all starting to set up. If we look at the ox markets to see, you know, if there's anything over there telling us anything different, you know, if I look at uh, the currencies to start with, which is the dollar in particular, on the dollar, uh, if we look at it, you can see a consolidation starting to take place now. That's the sort of thing we actually want to see if we want to be long equities. You want to see this, this dollar just consolidate and trade in a range and that is the sort of trade it's starting to set up. Got a nice big spike, wide price spread bar here, a retrace down into the bottom before this over. Does look like it has the potential to happen. If so, that retrace would give this market time uh, to go off and work on the upside. If we look at the oil market, same sort of thing here. You've got a consolidation starting to take place at the bottoms. Again, that's the sort of thing you need to see because with a consolidation down here, you can get stabilization, which allows these markets not to worry about it. If we look at the bonds, the bonds have been trying to pull back. They're almost into the swing point high. They've got decent volume coming back into it. Uh, volume over there is 7.4, coming back with 8.3. I think it's going to get into it tomorrow if you look at it on the weekly big volume at that area as it comes back into it. I suspect the first time in it's going to hold. It does look like it's going to test into this area and probably do it uh, tomorrow. Well, markets are closed tomorrow, but do it on Tuesday. So that's the bonds. Bonds also, you know, get a bounce out of that, maybe come back down as a result. Looking at silver and, and gold, it was a key week here and the reason for it was these markets, if you remember, they've been in a downtrend for quite a while. Matter of fact, let me pull over the monthly on silver. You can see this has been a steady downtrend now for a good three years. So you come off the top, ABCD structure down completes. Another one holds, eventually comes back up, but eventually gets the break and ABCD down completes there. Now you've got one from here, right? You get a bounce, you start coming down, and this one is interrupted, it doesn't finish. So now it's trying to come back up on a monthly basis to get back into those lows. If we look at silver, those lows look like, uh, let's get the numbers here. That low is uh, 18, 1775. We got as high as 1769. So you can see you didn't quite get into it. Why are we looking at that? Well, that's the retest regen zone, and you always want to look at those because that's where it tells you whether it wants to regenerate lower or not. So on silver, just trying to get up into that area and test it. Still a downtrend. No question here, still a downtrend. Trying to turn, but still a downtrend. If you want to turn, you have to go to the more recent uh, time frames. As a matter of fact, let's go to, let me pull this one back over, let's go to the daily. And on the daily, you can see a turn, right? You can see it taking place. Once it takes place there, and it eventually takes place here, which it did, the big question on the weekly is can it hold 
a breakout you know when it gets higher and in this particular case uh, it pushed up and over this high comes back down into it kind of test on it doesn't give it up that's a good thing if we look at the swing point high that was the key test that's this bar that bar has a high and a low of uh, let's get the low on it 1650 got down below it last week this week gets back above it 1654 if you're going to get a breakdown you want to see a couple bars well it didn't quite get a couple bars so it's still hanging on so to speak that's silver that's the more volatile one let's go look at gold if we look at gold it's got the same scenario everywhere on the long term uh, just not quite as negative on the daily the same sort of thing pushes up if we look at it on the weekly and say okay how did it do on its retest regen well unlike silver it never quite got under it came back tested under it held gold's holding gold looks like it's going to try to push back to the top side what does that mean well maybe it can move you know independent of equities typically uh, it doesn't move independent, it usually moves opposite, uh, but you know that's not a hard fact. It depends on the dollar really. The dollar itself, no longer skyrocketing, is helping gold and that's definitely what's... Uh, um, and well, gold started making that push as the dollar topped out. This pullback has come as the dollar has gone sideways. If the dollar continues to, I think gold has the room now to try to make an ABCD structure back to the upside. ABCD structure here, if it does develop, is going to be a big one. You had one here, finished off more than it should. Now you have one up to here, right? That push, if it happens, over the swing point high and back to those. And that would be kind of a game changer uh, because that high on gold, 133.69. And if we pull over the monthly chart, that is the swing point high on the monthly chart. So gold may be finally putting in a bottom. It got over the swing point, and actually I didn't talk about this, but let's look at this while we're here. Got over the retest bearish, retest regen on the monthly. One month, this is the second. If it stopped, if it trades back up over this and holds it, that would be two bars over that swing point high. That would be the first time we've had a change in trend from you know in terms of retest regen the change we the first time we had a change in a regenerate lower unable to regenerate lower that says more than likely you're in some sort of a sideways action that would be a big change if it if it happened in gold so we'll keep monitoring that uh, sector wise sectors uh, kind of like the general markets so uh, not looking that much different still looking pretty good uh, there's a number of these. Uh, we could look at a few of them. If I look at the SOX, for example, coming back up to test swing point highs, look at it on a weekly, doing the same thing. Uh, XLB coming back up to test the highs. You can see it's over them on the week on the dailies. Actually, not even test. It's over them on the weeklies as well. Uh, XLE got a decent push this last week. It was one of the leaders. Gets over swing point highs. Coming up to test. Uh, that swing point low and it's pretty deep into it but I doubt it's going to get over it. Uh, XLF, the financials. Financials had a pretty good push uh, to the top side. Uh, let me grab that chart. So here's the financials. Had a pretty good push to the top side. They're up there testing the swing point high. And if we look at them on the weekly basis, also coming back up, uh, looks like they're going to uh, have a little trouble here probably try to set up some sort of an ABCD structure but as we go across you know across the uh, board here most of these sectors you know starting to shape up again and and to support the indexes which are definitely trying to break higher so all in all not a bad looking story but before we get to the wrap on this uh, let's take a quick look at uh, some viewer questions So this first question has to do with kind of a general uh, question 
when you have a stock like uh, you know American Express, which just got hammered off news that they they're going to be losing the um, exclusive contract they have with Costco, and you know even though that's not going to take place for another year or so they have been hammered as a result of that and how do you play something like this so you know the question specifically was uh, it seems like a stock that drops 15 20 percent and then does a quick rebound to recover may uh, recover half of the loss or more so do you have any guidelines on how you follow as to when to try and buy a stock like that and how would you do it so the the first the first note here is that you know when you're looking at this stock in particular somebody already knew something you had a swing point low here you broke underneath it there and you did it on volume you got another break here on a on a daily basis and then you came back up to test that bar that breakdown bar you test it and you can't get over it right and you never even have come back up to test this one on a retest region never quite got to it that's showing you quite a bit of weakness right and then that little push back up couldn't handle it now you come down big volume right big blowout volume underneath another swing point low so when I look at this the first test that's going to be available now and let me clean this up is a retest region off this swing point low and so when we're looking here the first test let me just do it this way so we can look at it cleanly the first retest is going to be here so the first thing I want to do is I want to have enough you know depreciation of price to where my bounce is going to be pretty good that that's my first thought because no matter what the the stock does unless you can get a money management setup that makes sense then the trade doesn't make sense unless you're day trading. I mean, you can day trade almost anything, but you know, if you're if you're talking about a swing trade, which is I believe what's being talked about here, then you have to find something like that that gives you that. So here, you got an ABCD structure down. I mean, that's part of the deal. What I just talked about. The other part is you know projections. So you got an ABCD down. Uh, that structure there looks like it's about done, maybe a little bit more. So that one's about played out, probably going to get a bounce. That bounce is going to take you back into here, could reach the top part of it, and then push back down. But before you can even play that, if that's what's happening, is you need some sort of a reversal, and we don't have that yet. If we look at it on a weekly basis, right here you can see the projection is much lower. A, B, C, D here to there, back down. That's quite a bit lower, so you can see your risk. Still a lot of risk here, and just like we were just talking about, what you really want to see is you want to see an extension down far enough to when that bounce does come, you have a much better chance of making money. The other thing I see here that makes it hard to make a trade on this, at least right now, is it blows this low out and it blows it out with volume. So when I'm looking at that, that's saying, hey, this thing can go lower. It doesn't even have to bounce right now. And so from that perspective, I don't see a bounce. I've got multiple swing point breaks on multiple time frames. You got to let this thing go lower, wait for a reversal setup, ideally a reversal setup that is the extension. And if you do this extension, Let's see what that number is. It's uh, 94, almost 95. That's about 15 bucks. 15 off of this takes you down to about $71. I'm looking out at the monthly. About 72 is the lower end of a ledge out on the monthly. So about 71, 72 dollars. It's trading at 77 on the low. So another maybe five, six bucks to the downside that's probably where this thing will try to get to and that might be the place to play it now ideally right the best setup is ideally for this thing to just go straight there no bounce no nothing just head straight there finish it off right that gives you from a bounce perspective a trade perspective that gives you the ideal situation because it's stretched hard and fast 
That means it probably will bounce. It's probably going to come back to the swing point low if it does that. So you got a good six, seven, you know, five, six bucks on the way back up. And the probability of it's pretty high. That's the sort of setup you want. That's the way you try to trade these things if you trade them on swing trades for a failed, uh, you know, a failed stock getting a decent bounce. So that's the way that one looks. Uh, let's look at the other one. The other one is uh, Amgen. And on Amgen, the subscriber here is saying, uh, Missed your show from Thursday. Hope your business went well. He says, I bought some, well, a lot of Amgen. Uh, following the logic of the markets in good health for another few weeks or months, uh, the IBB still going strong. The Amgen in monthly is in a fine is fine in the uptrend, and um, it seems to have found a bottom here after correcting some 15 percent. So let's let's look at first. Let's start with the week, the monthly. So you know when we look at the monthly, yeah, nice big spike up. Now what I would note here on the monthly if I'm looking at this is that you've actually gone over the highs back underneath them with a lot less volume so you know this thing could just consolidate and and what I mean by that is you get a spike up in volume right here that spike up in volume comes after a long push higher now you trade back under it and you're kinda of deep into the bar that says you could trade that whole bar, right? That whole bar can become a range trade. And matter of fact, the way this looks on the monthly, it probably will become a range trade. So, you know, my my take here is the first the first thing I would notice is that, you know, from this one, what is that, about 164 down to about 127, that could be the range trade for a while. And I and it, and I think it has a decent chance of actually doing that. So that, that's my first take. Let's look at uh, the rest of this, though. So let's see it on a weekly. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Okay, so on the weekly, it looks a little different. And that is, is that this is the first push back into the intersection of the two big bars on the way up. That range trade we were talking about on the monthly would actually take you back into this area, right? It's about halfway now. It would take you back into this area, but that looks like that will come later, not earlier, if in fact it's going to happen. So that's the good thing, especially since you have a, a good chunk of this. So now what I would do is I would say, okay, you kind of got this range and that range, right? And potentially a little small one on the top and a little small one on the bottom, which means that basically you have this one and you have that one, right? They're kind of equidistant, maybe not quite. So let's clean that up and draw it again. So if I draw it again and try to make it about equidistant, which is what I like to do on these, that would say something like that and something like that, right? So that's probably the two ranges. So what did it do? It came in, tested right into the top of that range, which is the intersection of that. That's an ideal place to pick it up with the idea that it's probably going to try to trade back up into this area, top of this bar. I, if I were you, would be thinking about selling some into the top of that bar and then trying to see if you can get a retrace back down into this area to buy again or potentially even a deeper retrace. So that's the way I would trade this thing off the weekly. Let's see what the daily looks like now. And the daily doesn't change my mind at all. This this uh, looks like this 164 area is the key area on the way back. And is that is that this bar? It actually is 164. So yeah, about 164. So that that would be my my the way I would look at this for now. Now there was a mention of the IBB as well. And, and frankly, I haven't liked the way the IBB is trading. Um, and, and, and the reason for that is it, it doesn't look nearly as healthy as it has been. These bars were bars to the downside. Big volume, not much on the way back up, although it's heading up. Also over here, a huge bar to the downside, big wide price spread bars. 
if you look inside the IBB, there's only one stock in there that's really, you know, hitting on all cylinders. The rest of them are struggling. And that's, that's on a daily basis. If I look at it on a weekly basis, it doesn't look quite as bad. Um, but it just doesn't feel quite as good as it did, I guess, maybe is the way to say it. Is it in trouble? No, it's not in trouble. It, you know, is it, is it going to break down? I don't, I don't know that it's going to break down. It just doesn't look as strong as it did, in my opinion. So uh, I, would, uh, I would definitely trade around that core position, especially since it's a large one, uh, that you have an Amgen uh, trying to better that price point for a longer term move um, is the way I would probably trade it. So let's go and uh, take uh, a weekly wrap here and see what we have as uh, our general final parting thoughts. You know, it, it doesn't take a genius to realize that, that what, what is happening here is Europe is now driving the action. And that's because of the QE that's taking place in Europe. You had a big push up on the expectation of QE. It kept pushing and pushing. This is the CAX. Gets a consolidation and now is starting to leg higher again. That's true here. It's also true on the DAX, which is of course the other large entity with inside that, that European uh, Euro. Uh, European, uh, nah, I'm losing my words here as I'm trying to draw uh, the EU, right, the European Union. Consolidation now is taking place. This one is struggling to get back over the highs, but it's hitting them with pretty good volume. It, it, it won't surprise me to see the DAX also push higher before much longer. European strength is ending up being strength for the rest of the world, just like we saw with Japan about a what, almost a year and a half ago now, right, where they came out with their big QE program and everything went up as a result. We're getting the same bleed over now out of Europe. And so when I think about Europe and I think about what's happening in these markets, Europe can move higher. There, there's nothing here to stop this from making a larger move. If I bring it to the monthly and look at uh, Europe from that perspective, you know, an ABCD structure here starting at 76.55 uh, up to there gets you about, what is it, about 2,100 points. Uh, tack that onto here, that gets you about 10, 10 uh, oh, let's get the numbers right. Let's do it again because I got it wrong. And so if I go back here, I think it was about 2,500 points. Yeah, it's 25 onto that. It gets you about 10 ages, which is about where it is. So ABCD structures on a long-term basis, just about finished consolidation. You kind of can see that consolidation taking place. Consolidate and then start pressing again. And I suspect that's probably what we're going to see happen unless we get a big problem in the EU like Greece or some other country uh, tugging against it. Economic numbers starting to look a little bit better in the EU. Uh, you know, it just seems like this is where everything's coming from, and these charts are pretty positive. So, if I look at that, that says, hey, these things are going to hang up here and probably try to start pressing higher again before too much longer. What does that mean for U.S. markets? Well, if we look over at those, we've already talked about this ABCD structure here being huge. You know, it could go another 100 points. And if we look at it on a very long-term basis, there's nothing to stop this from making new highs, which is doing and pushing higher. You know, ABCD structure here, I'd have to compute it, but it looks pretty tall to me. It looks like another 5% or so at least. So everywhere I look, now that we've got that breakout of the consolidation, it does appear that these markets are doing another leg up. And so, you know, if, um, if you hung on there and kind of, you know, just played it safe, uh, you're in pretty good shape uh, for the coming um, leg up is, is what it looks like. As far as uh, tomorrow, U.S. markets are off. Uh, I will be taking the night off as well. No show tomorrow. I'll be back on Tuesday. 
So until then, have a great one. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.